Let's look at why, no matter how much we screen, the prices are too high on cars, they keep going up. So here's why cars keep going up. I'm talking about the price, not the value. First of all, we've got to start with how much people are making. So I found this on US average median salary by state. Uh, a lot of the different stats on uh, house or income or household income, they take more than one uh, person in consideration. As near as I can tell, this is a single person. So what I'm drawing here for uh, consideration is that the average median I'm going to say at least 50,000 for sake of argument. Uh, somewhere here they show that the average is more like 63,000. So average, median, mean, however you want to calculate it, somewhere in there. And that's why I'm taking 50 grand as a assumption for the average um, American buying a car. 50 grand. So some areas are more, some areas are less. Insurance is going to be more, insurance is going to be less, but uh, got to start somewhere. So then you've got to look at um, taxes. So how much of that 50000 do you actually get to spend? Because if you're in a higher tax state, obviously you can afford less of a vehicle or anything than if you're in a lower tax state. So tax burden. So I'm going to argue for sake of making this easy also that uh, we're looking at a 25% uh, take or tax burden. So your take home is 75% of what you make. So if you make 50,000 for sake of argument, 75% you take home, 25% goes to taxes. So 37,500 is what I'm figuring. So by the month, that is, so you take that $37,500, uh, your assumed after-tax take-home, divide that by 12 to get your monthly income. So when you're looking at uh, car payments, a lot of the places I want you to calculate are coming with a monthly figure. So $3,125 would be your monthly income based on the above assumptions. So many places are saying, 10% of your income, of your take home income, can be for a car payment. Now, 10% of the 3125, you're talking $312. So, and also, it, most financial places you listen to, if you're going to borrow money for a car, which if you're following the Dave Ramsey plan, you're not borrowing money for a car, you're saving up and paying cash. So, that even puts a few more restrictions on it. But if you are uh, in the mind to borrow the money, most financial advice is going to tell you not to go more than 48 months so that you don't end up upside down in that car. So $300, $312 for a car, uh, that'd buy you a $12,000 new car. Well, that's not going to happen. So maybe a $12,500 used car. So if you take that road you really got to check that car out, make sure you're getting something that is going to last at least four years. Uh, that's a big one. But if you're looking at a new car, and for sake of argument, let's say you're looking at a new car, yeah, that's that's not going to get you anything in the United States. So then the financial gurus say 20% of your income for um, automotive expenses, including anything. But if you just push the envelope and said, okay, 625 bucks. So I'm pushing the envelope a little bit. My salesperson is saying I deserve it and I'd look really good behind the wheel of that. Eh, we gotta get kind of wrong. So then you're at just about a $26,000 vehicle. So that does actually get you something. So the average new car is, ooh, I believe $48,000. But you can get a new VW Jetta, a new Chevy Trax. There's a couple things you can get, but that's six hundred and twenty dollars for forty-eight months. Um, some people will stretch as far as thirty percent, and that would get you. What do I figure? Nine hundred and thirty-eight dollars. Ah, close there. So that you're still 
$10,000 shy of the average new car. So then it's a bad idea to stretch out the payment, but going to 60 months, that gets you almost to the average price of new car. A lot of people are doing 72 months, which would get you to 40, 54,000. But that's 30% of your take home, $930 for 72 months. So you're gonna end up upside down in that car unless it's some crazy reliable one that uh, holds its value. And the way car values have been up and down the cars that held their value in the past may not be the same cars that hold their value in the future. No guarantee there. And possibly when you go in, they're going to say, oh, yeah, your credit score is you know, not as good. So they're going to uh, drop, drop what you can buy by increasing your interest rate. So the higher your interest rate goes, the less you can afford to buy. The higher the rate, the more you can afford to buy. So there's some good things there. Uh, then at that 72 months, oh, maybe you'd scale it back closer to that 20%. And, I mean, that's not horrible, but that's 38 months. And, I mean, what happens? You've got to get the gap insurance in on your, um, on your car. So if you get in an accident, you're probably going to be upside down in it for a while. There, there's a lot of concerns to be made there. But this is what car companies are looking at. They're looking at that there's ways to put the deal together. And they don't really, I, don't, I hate to say they don't care, because they care on some level, because they need you to come back as a customer. But as long as they're putting those deals together, and you're signing on the bottom line and driving away with that car, they win. Uh, that's, that's what they're business to do, make as much money per car as they can. So this is kind of the, the main part why car companies are continuing continue to raise prices it's because it can people are paying it uh looking at tesla for the uh way they do it so they've got something similar kind of working the four squares type of thing where you've uh just make it about payment so they've got their cash or their finance option and then on the tesla one they've got the assumed eight percent down so some of the other ones, they don't work the, that's one of the four squares, how much down, uh, your payment, your trade-in, and the vehicle price. So they try to make it about something other than the vehicle price or the trade-in. They, they want to get as much from you and just play with the financing to uh, get you to agree so that uh, you pay longer, higher percent, whatever. But... Uh, the, the Tesla system takes off, you know, they assume the uh, down payment. So this helps make that number smaller, get you to sign, sign on the bottom line. So Tesla's got a good system here. They've got it integrated well. This is an easy one. Um, it reminds me a lot of Carvana. So here's a uh, 2024 RAV4 hybrid. So this is used. And it's still basically forty thousand dollars. But at Carvana, they're being a little bit transparent, I guess. But my problem with with me personally buying something for Carvana, most of the time when I compare a like a book price to what Carvana is asking, I mean they've got a nice vehicle and a nice process. They've got the financing tied up with it, but they're from the ones I've looked at, about 2000 higher than like Blue Book Retail. So they're a little bit high compared to the places where I've looked up their values. So I feel confident I could get a better deal somewhere else, but it wouldn't be as easy. So I think a lot of people are going to Carvana, like hitting the easy button type of thing. It's... They, they take care of the financing. They'll drop at your house. There's no negotiation issues. There's just no problems dealing with it. Um, some of the other manufacturers, jumping around here, here a little bit, but uh, some of the other manufacturers, like uh, back to the tracks, maybe forward to the tracks, estimated payment 370 even brand new. I mean, yeah, it's a Chevy Trax, and it might not be the uh, dream vehicle, but Chevy's got a, a decent process. 
a lot of the traditional car dealers, Chevy, Ford, whatever, um, you go in there and they're gonna they're gonna work you. Uh, and it's just it's not fun because you're not I mean, you're not really equipped to handle it. I mean, I, I've bought new vehicles and you know four hours later of trying to just freaking sign the paperwork and they're still trying to get you to take out more you know undercoating or insurance or added warranties and I mean, they just keep hammering and hammering you so i i would do anything possible to not go in and deal with a uh, traditional automotive company but if there's a way to do it uh, it's not bad uh, when you look at it as a uh, monthly payment. But back to uh, Carvana, since they really work in the system. Uh, looking at, so a uh, Porsche, just because it's a fun example, more so because there's not that many of them. So Carvana has 10 pages of Porsche, and this is the seventh page. So they've got a bunch on hold, and they've got a bunch of uh, purchase and progress. So the last three pages are all purchase in progress so people are paying the money they're paying the extra they're getting the car shipped and, and it's a Porsche it's not you know a Toyota Camry they're spending I some of these are cheap for Porsche but they're older but but they're spending some real money on uh, a lot of these you know well above well above the average and from my experience, these cars are also above book value. Like they could have bought them somewhere else cheaper. So making it easier is really bringing in the money. Uh, people are, are spending the money, making the purchase. They're stretching out the payments. They're, they're doing what they need to do to get into these cars. So there's no incentive for auto manufacturers to rein in prices when they don't have to the cars are selling yeah we're seeing a little bit of a downturn now but not everybody so like GM is actually doing a little better with theirs because they have the multiple ranges so they've got the tracks that you can get but they also have the higher-end vehicles uh, Ford really shot themselves in the foot by getting rid of the less expensive vehicles so they do great in an up economy but in a down economy they just don't have any anything to put you in you know you, they pretty much got to sit back and wait for the economy to turn up again and then start uh you know selling the higher end vehicles where where chevy's thought ahead and made these alliances to build these less expensive vehicles so they can uh you know fill all the niches uh some of the other manufacturers are well they they were all trying to get a higher margin so the more options a higher trim the higher margin and that's something that you're definitely rated on by your shareholders so all the uh, car manufacturers that sell in the US have been trying to increase their increase their, their margin increase their sale price increase the trim levels and yeah so the average person can maybe afford the average car but not much above that yeah I see a lot of cars well, so the Porsche is funny because I see a lot of like Jeeps that are a lot more expensive than a Porsche. And I, to me, the Porsche is going to hold its value. The Jeep may be a little more usable, but the reliability on Porsche actually is pretty high. I mean, most things I see, they're in the, the top five for reliability. Where, uh, well, some of the other ones are in the bottom five. So you, you kind of get what you pay for in some respects. Uh, used Porsche is probably going to last longer than a, a new of a lot of other vehicles. But in any case, just to summarize, uh, the car companies are going to keep asking what they're asking because people are paying it. And they're finding a way to pay it. Might be some of your worst financial decisions ever to borrow money for a car, but uh, everybody's doing it. I shouldn't say everybody. I mean, Dave Ramsey's clan isn't doing it. They're the only ones with half a brain, but the rest of them are uh, all worried about what their car looks like and what their friends think. And, I, I mean, who cares what they think? Drive what's going to uh, give you the best deal and what you like. So, all right, that is my two cents worth on uh, car manufacturers just cranking up prices because people are paying them. Thanks.